This lesson is on toxic air. The first objective is to understand common pollutants we find in the air and their effect on their environment. We need to understand and explain how catalytic converters work and we need to continue to understand how this affects the atmosphere. There are three pollutants that we need to talk about, the first of which is carbon monoxide. Now carbon monoxide is a poisonous gas which is formed through incomplete combustion. So if you remember our last lesson, we talked about methane reacting with oxygen produces carbon monoxide plus carbon plus water. So carbon monoxide is formed from any incomplete combustion reaction. Carbon monoxide is dangerous to us because if we breathe it in, it binds to our red blood cells and this prevents oxygen attaching themselves to our red blood cells and being carried around our body. So carbon monoxide poisoning can potentially be a real issue. Therefore, some people will have meters in their homes reading carbon monoxide levels. The second important pollutant is oxides of nitrogen, which we sometimes call NOx gases. Okay, so that could be carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. And nitrogen oxides cause photochemical smog and can also be responsible for some degree of acid rain. Now, nitrogen oxides are formed inside internal combustion engines. This is because the temperature inside a combustion engine is hot enough to break apart the triple covalent bond. That means that this is one place where they can react and then the exhaust give out nitrogen oxides. So one job of a catalytic converter is to remove nitrogen oxides and make it safe. The last pollutant is sulphur dioxide. Sulphur dioxide is formed when impurities in fuel are burnt, particularly sulphur impurities, and then they react to form sulphur dioxide. Sulphur dioxide is more responsible for acid rain, which goes on to kill plants, aquatic life, and to corrode stonework and essentially damage buildings. So sulphur dioxide can be quite damaging in high concentrations. Now that we understand what the three key pollutants are and what effects they have, we're going to demonstrate one of these pollutants by making it in the lab. We're going to make sulphur dioxide. We're going to make one of the pollutant gases we've just talked about. We're going to make sulphur dioxide. And we're going to do that by reacting sulphur with pure oxygen. Now sulphur normally is a yellow powder. We've got pure oxygen in the glass jar. And we're going to react sulphur with oxygen to form sulphur dioxide. Now the reason this chemical is found in the air is because as we burn fuels, impurities contained within them of sulphur also react with oxygen and that produces sulphur dioxide gas. Sulphur dioxide is the gas responsible for causing acid rain. So now for the reaction, inside we've got sulphur. We're going to put this onto a spoon which we will then drop into the gas jar once it's ignited. Now, because the gas jar has got pure oxygen, it means this reaction is going to be an example of complete combustion. And we'll get lots of sulphur dioxide produced. When sulphur burns, it burns with a bright, distinct purple colour. Which we can see. You can see the sulphur dioxide gas being formed, we can still see that the sulphur is still ignited in the pure oxygen. Now the gas itself isn't found in very high concentrations in the air, but it's when it dissolves in rainwater that we then get acid rain forming. As it dissolves it forms sulfuric acid in low concentrations, and then acid rain then goes on to kill plants, to kill aquatic life and to damage buildings. If we have a look at it now that the reaction is finished, we can see that sulphur dioxide is this thick white colour. And this is an example of one of the pollutant gases that we find in the atmosphere. Now we need to understand and explain how catalytic converters work. So the job of a catalytic converter is to remove carbon monoxide from the exhaust gases of a car. It also removes car nitrogen monoxide. So as a reaction, we have carbon monoxide plus nitrogen monoxide gives out nitrogen and carbon dioxide. So we can write this as a symbol equation. So carbon is represented with a C, and mono means one, so we have one oxygen. 
we react this with nitrogen monoxide, so the same, it has a single oxygen, and this gives that nitrogen, which has a 2 next to it, and carbon dioxide. Di meaning 2, so 2 oxygens. We need to balance this equation. So we follow our usual steps for balancing equations and split the equation into half. So we have one carbon molecule and one oxygen, one nitrogen and one oxygen. Over here we have two nitrogen molecules, one carbon and two oxygens. Our next step is to cancel out on both sides of the equation. So we can cross off our carbon, we can cross off our two oxygens, and we can cross off nitrogen. It's at this point we realise we have an excess of nitrogen on this side of the equation. So we can't get rid of it, we have to find some nitrogen on this side. So the only way to do that is to increase the number of nitrogen monoxide molecules. This means we then have to draw it out again, and now we can cross off our nitrogen. We've now made a new problem, we now have an excess of oxygen on the left hand side of the equation, so we need to find some more on the right. In order to do this, we put a 2 next to carbon dioxide, which means we have an extra carbon and an extra 2 oxygens, which we then cross off our 1 oxygen. This gives us an excess of carbon and an additional oxygen, which we can find by increasing the number of carbon monoxide atoms. And once we've done that, we know that this equation is now balanced. So the full balance equation is 2CO plus 2NO goes to nitrogen 2 plus 2CO2. So carbon monoxide plus nitrogen monoxide goes to nitrogen and carbon dioxide. Now, catalytic converter gets its name because inside the catalytic converter there is a mesh that is, made, that is the catalyst. Now, a catalyst increases the rate of a reaction without being used up and it provides a surface for the reaction to happen on. Now common materials used in catalytic converters are platinum and rhodium. Other materials can be used but these are two common precious metals that are used. Hopefully we can now complete our objectives. So to link common pollutants to their environmental problems, for example nitrogen oxides which leads to photochemical smog, to explain how catalytic converters work and to analyse additional evidence for the development of the atmosphere. If you don't understand any of these points, watch the video back or ask your teacher for help.